Now in this one, we have the combustion of um, carbon. And in this case, we have carbon on the left-hand side. And we have oxygen also on the left-hand side. So carbon is a, is a reactant. Oxygen is a reactant. And um, the product here is carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. And as it turns out, um, sometimes when you combine carbon with oxygen and it's hot enough, you'll get carbon dioxide. And sometimes when you combine them, you get carbon, di uh, carbon monoxide. And the, the reason why sometimes you get carbon monoxide is it occurs, this type of combustion reaction occurs when the oxygen supply is limited. Okay, if you have plenty of oxygen around um, and with your carbon, the product you're going to get is carbon dioxide. But if you have a limited amount of oxygen around, you're going to get um, carbon monoxide. And this is called incomplete, incomplete combustion. Complete combustion would be the carbon would take on as many oxygens as it could handle, which would be two of them, and you'd get carbon dioxide as a product. So incomplete combustion is when um, the carbon is not what we call oxidized all the way. But at this point in time, it's just important for you to know that sometimes in the place where the oxygen supply is limited, we're going to get um, carbon monoxide as the product. All right. Um, now, if you take a look at this um, chemical equation, I want to ask you, you know, is there anything wrong with it? Um, if you model it, you would, you would model this as, um, okay, I've got one carbon uh, atom and I've got an oxygen molecule and then over here I'm making carbon monoxide. And so you want to ask yourself the question, is the mass conserved across this change? I've got one, you know, black dot and two open dots, one black dot, one open dot here. Obviously, it's not, mass has not been conserved. And so in order to model this properly, you need to balance it with, with coefficients, the number out front. So in this type of a chemical equation, really, what you're going to have to do is recognize that because you have the two oxygens here and only one oxygen here, you're going to have to put a coefficient 2, which means I make two carbon monoxide molecules every time I react carbon with oxygen in a limited um, oxygen supply situation. And when you do that, you balance out your oxygen, but then you mess up the balancing of your carbon. And then you have to recognize that to um, properly model this chemical change, you have to put a coefficient 2 in front of the carbon and in front of the carbon monoxide. And so this is a nice uh, model here where you can see why you have to use those coefficients. So the, the big 2 out front here indicates two of those species. All right, the little two down here in the subscript indicates in this particular pure substance, I always have two oxygen atoms chemically combined. All right, so the subscripts are defining the pure substance. The coefficient, the big number in the front, is telling me how many of those pure substances I have in a balanced chemical change. Okay, so you just want to make sure you've nailed that concept. Okay, let's see. Here's another example. All right, here's one. Here is, this is also a combustion reaction. I have an element in this case combining with oxygen to give me a product. Um, this one's called nitrogen monoxide. Uh, the common name for it is nitric oxide. You may have seen that in the news or heard that word before. That's the common name. But you don't have to memorize the common name. I'd be happy if you just call it by the systematic name, nitrogen monoxide. All right. Um, so try to model this one yourself. OK, if you need to, um, you can um, you know, stop the tape, work in small groups, and try to model it with spheres. And then after you model it with spheres, balance it so you have a valid chemical equation. Okay, so um, after you've tried it with your classmates, if you model it first as is, you can say, okay, I have a, um, I have a, uh, let me see, a molecule. I'll let this be two atoms of nitrogen chemically combined to give me molecular nitrogen, two atoms of oxygen chemically combined to give me a molecule of uh, oxygen, 
And then I've got the um, <clears throat> nitrogen and oxygen combined to give nitric oxide or nitrogen monoxide. And if you just look at this model, you can see that it's not balanced. You have two of these and only one of these. So we always balance with coefficients. So I just need another one of these molecules. And now I'm balanced. And so to take care of that, this symbolism is the same as this symbolism. So you want to be um, agile enough and have a, a high enough understanding that you can look at this and think this simultaneously. That's what chemists do. Okay.